Hey everyone, it's Madeline, and today's video is all about where to stay when visiting Grand Teton National Park. And if you stick around until the end of this video, we're going to discuss some of the pros and cons of the different areas to stay in this beautiful part of the U.S. The first option on the list for Grand Teton lodging is hotels inside the park. There are several hotel options inside the park, including the Jackson Lake Lodge, the Jenny Lake Lodge, and Headwaters Lodge. Many offer cabin accommodations and allow you to immerse yourself in the mountain surroundings. As always, hotels inside the parks do get expensive and book up very early in advance. The advantage to these hotels is that you are smack dab in the middle of the park, allowing you to maximize your time taking in this amazing mountain range. Number two on the list is campgrounds inside Grand Teton National Park. There are numerous camping options inside the park. The largest campground is the Grovant Campground. That can accommodate everyone from RV campers to primitive tent campers. The Jenny Lake Campground is only for tent camping. Most of these sites offer food storage lockers, restrooms, and potable water. Some larger campgrounds have showers and laundry. We'll have a link to information on the campgrounds in the video's description. The third spot on the list is the Jackson Hole Mountain Resort area located in Teton Village. Teton Village is located right outside of the park and offers several hotel options from the Snake River Lodge and Spa to the Teton Mountain Resort, as well as the Jackson Hole Four Seasons. These hotels are pricier and book up quickly. For that high price, you're paying for a higher end experience as the location and mountain views can't be beat. There are also various options for overnight rentals in this area. There is an advantage to being closer to the park entrance. Additionally, this area offers a number of solid restaurants to eat at. However, they do come with a higher price tag than you would find in Jackson. The final spot on the list is the town of Jackson, Wyoming. Jackson is located about 15 minutes from the park entrance and is the largest town near Grand Teton National Park. Jackson is where you'll find a wide variety of chain hotels as well as high-end options like the Jackson Hotel. You are a bit farther away from the meat of the park, but you are closer to shopping and nightlife. Jackson has a number of great restaurants and local craft beer breweries. Now, before we get into our discussion, if you have a great suggestion of a place to stay when visiting the Tetons, we'd love to hear from you with a comment below. As I mentioned earlier in the video, we're going to discuss the pros and cons of the different areas to stay around Grand Teton National Park. So first off, Jackson. Yeah, so Jackson is the biggest town in the area. It's really probably the biggest town for <laughs> quite, a, quite a ways. Um, and the nice part about Jackson is that it's where most of the amenities are. So if you are going to do something like a whitewater rafting, an animal safari, go fly fishing with a group, you're probably going to end up leaving from Jackson. So if you're looking at doing those activities, what ends up happening is you might be thinking, okay, I'll stay in the park and then drive to Jackson to do those activities. So either way, instead of staying in Jackson and driving into the park or staying in the park and driving to Jackson, you're doing that drive one way or the other. The thing is, uh, Jackson also has uh, the most options for places to stay in terms of hotels and for restaurants and you're gonna probably um, do a little more shopping in Jackson and visit, they have great craft breweries. So there's a lot of options for more things to do that aren't just park centric when you're staying in Jackson. And I think you're gonna find those restaurants and those hotels to be a little bit cheaper than they would be in the park or in the Jackson Hole Teton Village. Also you are, like uh, Adam mentioned, there is the drive to the park from Jackson. It is a little bit longer. I, I looked on the map. It said seven minutes. Uh, but that's that, to the park entrance, like the boundary. Right. To the to the real entrance of the park, like the real interior of the park. It is a little bit longer. And when we were there, there was a decent amount of traffic. So really, instead of 15 minutes to the park, it was probably more like 30 minutes. And the one thing about that, though, is your drive is pretty scenic. So you're not like... Oh, this is, you're not sitting in traffic like in a city, like, oh my gosh, I'm stuck looking at billboards and concrete. You're looking at like one of the most beautiful mountain ranges in the entire world. 
Right. And, you know, when we were driving, we were in some traffic and we saw a moose on the way. So it really um, was kind of a fun little drive. Well, those do cause traffic jams out there. So what are the pros and cons of Jackson Hole and Teton Village? Well, I'd say the first thing is that that area has all the amenities that you need. Um, There's hotels, there's overnight rentals. It's literally right up next against the park boundaries so you can get into the park in five minutes you're at the base of the mountains we just step outside and you already feel like you're inside the park now and it's got a variety of restaurants now all of those things come with a price tag it's going to be the more pricey area between jackson and jackson hole teton village and like we mentioned um jackson has a lot of options of where to stay jackson hole teton village there's still a lot of options but not quite as many yeah, and I think one thing that can be a little little confusing if you're researching this, going to that area for the first time, is what is Jackson Hole? What is Jackson? The Jackson Hole Ski Resort has the address of Teton Village. So when, when a lot of people talk about Jackson Hole, they're talking about what's also known as Teton Village because that's the address. But when you go there, there's a big sign that says Jackson Hole because that's the ski resort. So... That's really the area that we're talking about where we stayed, um, that Teton Village. And it really is a very unique setting for staying outside a national park. We just loved being that close to the park, especially when we wanted to do wildlife viewing later in the day. Like we wanted to see, you know, dusk is the big time to see animals out in the park. And we wanted to make sure we were there at that time. So then we had the short drive back to where we were staying as opposed to heading back to all the way back to Jackson. Yeah, you can get a nice meal um, in Teton Village. You can get a nice meal in Jackson. We kind of looked at it as food was fuel while we were out there. But it does provide a nice option for grabbing a quick meal. And if you want to stay in the park late and kind of see that wildlife, then Jackson holds a great opportunity to do that. Um, The one thing I will note is that we went there in the summer. If you're going in the winter and you want to ski then this is where you want to stay. But it's also going to be really pricey. And finally, what are the pros and cons to staying inside of the park? Well, the big pro to staying inside the park is that you're right there. And if you really want to experience the park and you don't care too much about where you're eating or all those other amenities, I mean, you can stay in the park and never have to go outside of it and deal with those things. So, And if you have an RV, I don't think that where you're going to eat is really much of a problem for you. We always say if you have an RV, that's a game changer. And they do have campgrounds that are RV friendly. So a uh, great opportunity for you if uh, if you have an RV. And if you are like, no, I want a tent camp, then there's plenty of options for you to do that as well, which is pretty cool. Yeah, they have some campgrounds that have showers and laundry. So you definitely have some more amenities than some other national parks where the camp camping is a little bit more primitive. But they also have several lodges as well inside the park. So there's options if you are not a camper, but you want to be inside the park. There's plenty of options to do that as well. Yeah, and and those lodges have dining. And so you could camp, you could stay in your RV, and then go in and use that lodge for those amenities. So that works out really well, too. And those lodges are sitting on just an absolutely absolutely beautiful setting. But again, um, as I said earlier in the video... These lodges are still expensive, and um, mm-hmm. they book up very quickly. They book so up the very summer, quickly. The summer is already booked up six months in advance. So yeah. you really need to be on top of that if that's what you that's you want to stay inside the park. You have to be on top of that. That's always kind of one of those things with national parks is where you're in those parks that have a lodge like Yellowstone, Grand Teton, uh, Grand Canyon, Yosemite you got to be on top of when those reservations are available and book those ahead of time and be prepared to pay the sticker price. Because I kind of look at it as going to a concert, going to a theme park, you're paying the price for entry. And if you kind of look at it like, oh, I'm paying $400 for a hotel room, you may not think that that hotel room is justifying the $400 price tag, but the location is justifying that price tag. So that's why they're so expensive. If you enjoyed this video and you found the information helpful and you want to see more from our time, not only in the Grand Tetons, but also Yellowstone, we have plenty of videos from those places up on our channel now, including vlogs from our days inside the park.